Hey. Hey, hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hello. That's brutal. Just, just two patriotic girls. So please don't take us the wrong way. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. And Debbie has a special announcement about today's episode. It's our 100th episode. 100 episodes. It's insane. I don't feel a day over 20 episodes. <laughs> <Good one. laughs> so, yeah, if you've never seen another video of ours, you got 99 more to watch. You sure do. You if can you sit choose. around a binge. You can totally binge watch this if you want. <laughs> um, that's actually been one of the coolest comments we get every now and then is, I just binge watched all your stuff. Right? And it's like, never would have thought somebody would be binge watching us. That's just <laughs> a bizarre but awesome, awesome thing to hear. Um, but thanks for being here today with us, guys. We do appreciate it. Thank you for 100 episodes of still watching us. That's um, right. You're sticking around. Yeah. And we appreciate that a lot. So please hit that like button. If you do like the content that we put out, um, consider subscribing to the channel, but only do that widen. Check out some of our other content. Make sure you want to be a part of our family before you subscribe. And we are the reaction channel that actually reacts. Yes, we do. So if you don't like pausing and you don't like talking during things and learning about stuff, we're probably not the channel for you. So don't hit that subscribe button if that's not something you're interested in. That's right. Okay? We pause and we talk. Yes, we like to learn about stuff. And today we're going to be doing just that. We were told about this video called Mad Jack Churchill, uh, A Life Too Unbelievable for Fiction. And that's the extent of our knowledge. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and before we get into that video, just really quickly, thank you to everybody over our Patreon. Um, we really appreciate our patrons. We always do. So thank you so much for getting exclusive content that only patrons get. Um, we also have the super thanks button at the bottom. We have links to buy me a coffee, other things in the description of all of our videos. Right, Debs? Check it out. Debbie's going to read us a, just a tiny excerpt <coughs> about Mad Jack Churchill, which will be the first thing we've ever heard about him. Um, you guys let us know in the comments if you already knew about this guy, because we don't know anything about him. Let's find out here. What you got, Debs? Um, Jack Churchill, uh, let's see, was a British army officer who fought in the Second World War with a longbow, bagpipes, and a Scottish broadsword. What? <laughs> Nicknamed Fighting Jack Churchill and Mad Jack. He was known for the motto, any officer who goes into action without his sword is improperly dressed. He fought with a what? That's, I lost, you lost me there. A longbow, longbow bagpipes, and a Scottish broadsword. Yes. I definitely am happy we're doing this video now. <laughs> it was very highly requested over on Facebook and, and people told us to watch it. So mm -hmm. thank you, Facebook family. Sounds like a pretty uh, tough guy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's one way of putting it. So let's dive in and learn a lot more about Mad Jack Churchill. When Jack Churchill died in 1996, one British newspaper said in his obituary that it would have been impossible to invent him because a fictional character with his story would have just not been credible. But why is that? What exactly is so unbelievable about a man who charged into battle in World War II wielding a broadsword and who shot at Nazis with a longbow? This was I mean, a man right who played his bagpipes yeah. while his unit was making a landing in enemy territory. A man who, time and time again, narrowly escaped death because fortune failed as the bold. He was also a man who, when he was finally done with military life, he went on to become a surfer. Truly, there is nothing weird about <laughs> Mad Jack Churchill, a man proclaimed by the Royal Explorers Club as one of the greatest adventurers to have ever lived. And in the episode today, his story. I'm excited. I am too. Like, I'm intrigued. Who is super intrigued already? I'm very intrigued. Oh, yeah, Did wait. you give a surfer after all that? <laughs> this is just insane. Okay, let's keep going. Mad Jack was born John Malcolm Thorpe Fleming Churchill on September the 16th, 1906. His father, Alec Fleming Churchill, worked as an engineer and later as director of public works, which meant that he moved the family around a lot for his job. Churchill first grew up in the British colony of Ceylon, which is now Sri Lanka and then Hong Kong, before relocating again to England. Jack had two younger brothers who would go on to have distinguished careers in the military, although not nearly as colorful. Churchill received his education at the Dragon School in Oxford. And okay. On the Isle of Man before enrolling in the Royal Military College Sandhurst. He finished military school in 1926 and joined the 2nd Battalion of the Manchester Regiment on deployment in Burma, which is now Myanmar. Over there, Churchill didn't see a lot of action, mostly patrolling the Irrawaddy River by boat to check up on all the villagers along the way. He found various hobbies to pass the time, and this is when he first started playing the bagpipes, being tutored by the Pipe Major of the Queen's own Cameron Highlanders, a regiment first 
Can you imagine being back then? Working in your field like in this picture. And some guy walking around with some bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just stuck on the dragon school. I know that was pretty cool. I'm name. like, I want to go there. <laughs> Our mascot at my high school was the aviators. Where'd you graduate from? I'm not talking about dragon this. Dragon school. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's just... <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty dang cool. Raised back in 1793, he also bought a Zenith motorcycle and took it for road trips through Southeast Asia. He had a memorable but dangerous encounter while riding across <laughs> India when he ran into a water buffalo. For a while, it seemed like Churchill's military career would be a rather short and unmemorable one. After getting bored with military life, he retired from the army in 1936. He went on a grand tour <coughs> of Europe, accompanied by another former member of the Manchester Regiment who became a prominent soldier in his own right by the name of Rex King Clark. Churchill took advantage of these free years by putting one of his greatest skills to good use, and that was archery. He took part in competitions, even representing Great Britain in the 1939 World Archery Championships awesome. in Oslo, Norway. His proficiency even earned Jack a few small movie roles where he portrayed archers in films such as The Thief of Baghdad and A Yank at Oxford. Huh. This guy's already got a very incredibly interesting life. Robert Churchill enjoyed his time away from the military, but as soon as World War II started, he joined up with the Manchester Regiment again and was deployed to France as part of the British Expeditionary Force, the BEF. This is where Churchill established his colorful persona and became known as Mad Jack, or Fighting Jack Churchill, as he was sometimes called. The extent of his peculiarities, shall we say, is a matter of some debate. Churchill himself was never one to toot his own horn, so most stories, they come from secondary sources. When you are dealing with the grand person, persona like that of Mad Jack, it's pretty easy to mix up myth with reality. First off, there was the sword. Churchill indeed carried one with him because, in his own words, any officer who goes into action without his sword is improperly dressed. It is <laughs> often said epically Churchill. cool freaking quote though, isn't it? It is. That's a great motto to live by. Is it? Sure. Just around the house? Yeah, you need your sword. We actually, I do have a sword. I forgot about that. We could start wearing swords again. No, no, I, I don't think it's a good idea. Me and sharp <laughs> objects use a little mix. <laughs> yeah, probably not a good idea. Favoured the Scottish Claymore. That is not strictly correct, though, as we're not talking about the famous large two handed greatsword. Instead, he wielded a smaller one handed version called a clay bag to avoid any confusion here. The main differences between the two, apart from the obvious <laughs> size, was that the clay bag had a basket hilt instead of a cross hilt and was single edged, unlike its larger counterpart. Churchill probably chose this weapon because it had been used for hundreds of years as the full dress sword for the officers of the Highland regiments. So Mad Jack cool. did not get to use his his sword in combat too often. Instead, he relied on it to signal and inspire the men, as can be evidenced by a photograph of a charge exercise in Inverary. Okay. Then there was the bow and arrows. Churchill certainly had the skill to use them effectively, and often took them on patrols as they were a silent weapon. He is credited with making the last recorded kill with a bow and arrow in World War II when he took down a German soldier in 1940. Finally, to complete the look, Mad Jack Churchill also carried a set of bagpipes. He would often play a few rousing so awesome. renditions before battle to boost the morale of the men. The March of the Cameron Men was a bit of a favorite of his. Of course, all of Churchill's eccentricities <laughs> would not have... I'm sorry. I'm just imagining... <laughs> not something You're... I pictured happening during World War II. I know. <laughs> Walking around with your bagpipes, marching into battle and... That's freaking awesome. You play a song. It is awesome. I mean, it's like we just... said when we just watched the Royal... Um... Oh, I'm going to say that wrong. The military tattoo. Edinburgh. Military tattoo. Mm -hmm. And then we watched the bagpipes. And I was saying, I wish we could just do wars that way. Yeah, that would be cool. Mad Jack took that literally. But at least he was, uh, I don't know, giving his men something to take their mind well, off. Well, I think that's actually, about yeah, that. I think that's freaking epic. You know, yeah, I, that's, that is. that's all, just an awesome thing to do. Like, <laughs> just, cool. I like that you pointed that part out been looked upon so fondly by his men if he wasn't also a capable leader. When he joined the BEF, he was made second in command of the 4th Infantry Brigade with the 2nd Battalion. His unit was part of the Dial Plan, or Plan D, an effort by the French army and its allies to stop the German invasion through Belgium. This did not turn out so well. The allies kept losing battle after battle and had to retreat while German troops kept advancing westward. Eventually, this culminated in the Battle of Dunkirk, oh, okay. but before that, Churchill and his men had their own little 
initial moment of glory in the tiny French village of Lepinette near Richebourg. By this point, Churchill was in command of the unit because the original commander had been injured in battle. Their goal was to patrol the Maginot Line and secure the Allied retreat. On May 27, 1940, Mad Jack and two infantrymen were covering the rest of his unit when they saw a small group of five German soldiers approaching. This was the infamous moment when Churchill took out his longbow and shot one of the enemies before his squad mates opened fire with the more traditional machine guns. Really? The reason this is infamous, <laughs> apart from the obvious, is because different sources give differing accounts. Some say the target was an officer, others say that he was a soldier. Some say that Churchill hit him square in the heart, while others claim the arrow went in the neck or into his stomach. Some sources even assert that the illustrious moment never happened at all, and that Mad Jack himself later confessed that he had lost his bow earlier in the campaign. Indeed, if it did happen, then hitting the German sergeants in the heart would make the most sense. Churchill was an elite level archer. He would have had the skill and forethought to go for the most lethal shot on the most valuable target. During the fight, Jack took a bullet in the shoulder, but was also rewarded with the military cross for his bravery. He then fought at Dunkirk, where he sustained another minor injury. Huh. That's just pretty cool. And I, I always, uh, like, stories like that always kind of upset me because you don't have, like, what really happened. I know. Everyone has a different version. Yeah. But any, any version, he still shot a guy with the, bow, with the long bow. Well, then he, he did say at the end there that he said he actually lost it prior to that. Yeah. Maybe. So... I'm going it's, with it happened. It's a pretty cool story. I'm totally going with that happened. What do you yeah. guys say? Do you think it happened? I, I think, think it happened. happened. I think we all know it happened. I don't <laughs> think it happened. It happened. Because it's Mad Jack, man. That's right. Mad Jack was mad. And what a cool nickname. <laughs> I would like a nickname. Don't do that in the comments section. <laughs> no. Unless it's something nice. <laughs> I can't pronounce that. Following the evacuation at Dunkirk, Churchill returned to England, but was already eager to get back to the fighting. In 1941, he joined the British commandos and took part in Operation Archery, also known as the Malloy Raid. This was a British effort to launch a raid on German forces occupying the Norwegian island of Vorgsay. Churchill was dispatched with the No. 3 Commando Battalion, where he once again served as a second-in-command. The raid started in the early hours of December the 27th. Unbeknownst to the Allies, the German side also had an additional unit of light infantry mountain troops called Gabitza Yaga, which were there on leave. This prolonged sure. the battle and increased the number of casualties, but the British, they were still successful. They took about 100 prisoners and freed around 70 Norwegian resistance fighters, as well as sinking 15,000 tons of shipping and obliterating strategically significant docks, warehouses, and fish oil plants. Moreover, if the Nazis wanted to maintain control of the area, they would have to redirect troops, which could have been useful elsewhere. Churchill was in charge of one of the five parties that the commandos were divided into. He led his men into action with another stirring rendition of March of the Cameron Men. Afterwards, Love he it. threw a grenade, took out his sword, and charged into battle. Mad Jack sustained what? an injury during this fight, for which he received another military cross. The exact nature of the injury, however, remains something of a mystery. Hold up. Did he just say, like, he was just walking through there with the bagpipes and threw a grenade and, like, what else? Took okay, out his, um... Sword? I thought he said sword or bow and arrow. One of them two. <laughs> and just went into battle? Um, that, that's just insane. It's insane, but it's also just pretty cool. That is cool. <laughs> okay, just making sure I heard that right. We're around that five seconds. Fight for which he received another military cross. The exact nature of the injury, however, remains something of a mystery. It is possible that Churchill was hurt by a British demolitions charge which detonated too close to him. Mm. In another version, the explosion caused the wall that Churchill was leaning against to crumble and fall on top of him. In perhaps mm. the most fitting story, during the British retreat, Jack liberated a bottle of wine to celebrate their success. Again, a charge went off in close proximity and smashed the bottle, sending a shard of glass flying towards Churchill. Jack returned to England to recuperate, but he would soon experience tragedy. Six months later, his younger brother Robert, who was a lieutenant oh. with the Royal Navy, was killed in action off the coast of Malta. The newly promoted Lieutenant Colonel Churchill was now in charge of the No. 2 Commando Battalion to which he was assigned in 1943 in order to take part in the Allied invasion of Italy. The unit first landed in Sicily and then in Salerno. Both times, Mad Jack had his trademark sword on his waist, bow and arrows strapped to his chest, and bagpipes under arm. It was it. an unusual awesome. sight, but then again, so were Churchill's tactics, which nevertheless proved effective. Although Italy withdrew from the war, the Germans still had troops 
in the Bay of Salerno. The Allies initiated Operation Avalanche with the goal of eliminating the Nazi presence. Churchill's commandos had the task of disabling the artillery fire on the western half of the bay. During the final counterattack, Mad Jack came up with a counterintuitive strategy. He knew that the location made a surprise attack impossible. Instead, he went for the complete opposite. He organized his men into six parallel columns. They attacked in the middle of the night, repeatedly shouting commando to avoid friendly fire. The battalion won the fight, completed its objectives, and took 136 prisoners. But somehow, wow. Churchill's crowning moment came afterwards. Jack excelled as a commando. He liked to carry out stealthy raids and counterattacks, leading small teams of hand-picked soldiers. One night in Italy, he went out, accompanied by just a corporal, hoping they might run into a German or two. They did. They spotted two figures smoking cigarettes in the darkness. They were Nazi soldiers, part of a group digging trenches in the nearby village of Pigaletti. Churchill and his corporal, they snuck up and subdued them, taking one each. Mad Jack then used this soldier as a human shield and entered the village with his sword drawn. He went from one what? small digging team to another, taking them by surprise and forcing them to surrender. In the end, he took 42 prisoners and made them march back to his camp. Dead. I want to say something before you do it, that's okay. Yeah? I'm only thinking about one thing right now. I'm thinking about a video game. <laughs> I'm yep. thinking like Assassin's Creed. You were yes, going there, I, I knew. <laughs> Look at the Assassin's Creed stuff, like come up. Yep. You know, and oh my gosh, I've never actually heard anything like that actually being true. Sneak up behind him at the sleeper hole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, go to sleep. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> that is hilarious. That it is. is awesome. And <laughs> dude is pretty. Scary. He was seriously like a barbarian, but in like it seems like a civilized manner. Yeah, I just said that. That makes no civilized sense. Civilized barbarian. Yeah, makes no sense at all. <laughs> um, but I find that to be like. <laughs> Who else pictured a video game? It's like what an amazing soldier. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this guy was, was seriously just like, obviously, he he retired, you know, originally, mm -hmm. then comes back when, you know, his country needs him, the world needs him. Yep. And uh, just, just like, you know what? I got this. I'll, I'll go ahead Goes and take, in, does things his own way. I'll take people on my own here. Yeah. I'll just go, you know, walk around town at night and just knock them out by myself. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's just so freaking cool. It is pretty cool. I absolutely love it. <laughs> and carry their own mortars, bombs, and wounded to slow them down. Churchill even allowed the soldiers to keep their weapons, but he did make sure to remove all of the rifle bolts. He was Smart. further rewarded with the Distinguished Service Honor. How many did he get? It seems like a lot. It's at least the third one he's mentioned. Next up for Churchill was to take part in the McLean mission in 1944 in Yugoslavia. The country had quite an adept resistance force known as the Partisans, which were led by Josip Broz Tito and were causing plenty of headaches for the Nazi war machine. The main purpose of the mission was to make contact with the Partisans, find out all there was to know about them, and help them fight the Germans however possible. Fighting Jack and his commandos were tasked with conducting a raid on the island of Brach. Specifically, they wanted to control Vidova Gora, which at 2000 1560 feet is the highest peak not only in Bratch but in the entire Adriatic Islands. I'm waiting to find out how many times he's mispronounced something because you guys always tell us in the comments <laughs> that's not how you say it. That's not how you say it. Just no, we don't know. So even if he does, we wouldn't know. But I can Sounds already right to me. No, I can already tell he's probably probably off on a thing or two. But I couldn't do any better. I was just going to say I would butcher it way more than he is. I was doing. just going to say I would have been like <laughs> <laughs> I would have just I would have spelled it to you guys. I'd have been like some place. No, I would have just spelled it. I'd be like this place, blah 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 blah. <laughs> and Zed. Zed. If you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. Once again, he led the charge by playing the bagpipes as his men ran into battle. However, the position was heavily fortified, including mines and artillery. Only a few men, Churchill included, managed to reach the objective, and they were also incapacitated by shrapnel from mortar fire. The oh, reigning survivors oh. were taken prisoner. What happened next was a nice moment of serendipity or karma, depending on what you believe. The man in charge of the POW camp was one Captain Hans Thorner. He always treated his prisoners well. As a show of gratitude, Churchill wrote him a thank you letter and even invited him to England after the war to have dinner with him and his wife. Thorner kept the letter, and it saved his life later when he was captured by Yugoslav forces and tried huh. as a war criminal. During his time as a prisoner, okay. Mad Jack moved around a lot, and this was mostly because the Germans incorrectly thought that he might be related to Winston Churchill. I was nope. First, he was taken to Berlin for <laughs> nope. interrogation, and afterwards he was sent to the Sachsenhausen concentration camp. He was held in Special Camp A, which, as his name would oh. imply, was reserved for prominent prisoners of war. Churchill was not there for long, because he started working on an escape plan almost as soon as he 
arrived. In September 1944, he and a small group of British officers dug a secret tunnel and made their way out. Mm -hmm. Among his co-escapees was Royal Air Force officer Bertram James. He took part in no less than 13 breakouts from Nazi POW camps during World War II. Just a few months prior to this, he was among the men who escaped from Stalag Luft III and the events immortalized in books and cinema as The Great Escape. So let's I was just gonna ask about The Great Escape. Are you effing serious? I know. Oh my god. This dude. This dude. This brave yeah. soldier. I don't like cussing on here. Y'all know that. <laughs> he was a badass! <laughs> yeah, I've been trying not to say that. Oh my <laughs> but yeah, god! What a badass. Through the war. And then escapes out of prison. I mean, come on, man. Digs what? a tunnel? Yes. Because <laughs> I'm like, this sounds like the great escape. And then he said it, and I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me. <laughs> I, wow. Oh, too much. Too much, but too freaking cool. Yeah. Mad Jack Churchill, you badass. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Good God. I'm just like... Totally, like, I got, like, a, I don't I know. played his bagpipes the whole time. <laughs> now I really want bagpipes. No, no I, I, I would, she would, she would divorce me very quickly. Um, <laughs> because then I'll play the bagpipes. And then I would divorce her very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I just can't believe it. That's, that, oh, my. Let's rewind that just a little bit for a moment because I got to hear that part again. Okay. I, I just, I want to make sure I... No way. A small group of British officers dug a secret tunnel and <laughs> made their way out. Among his co-escapees was Royal Air Force officer Bertram James. He took part in no less than 13 breakouts from Nazi POW camps 13. during World War II. Just a few months prior to this, he was among the men who escaped from Stalag Luft III and the events immortalized in books and cinema as the great escape. <laughs> so let's get back to Churchill. He sprained his ankle during the breakout and while he never complained about it, it did slow him down. He was recaptured near the town of Gustro and this time he was sent to another the prisoner camp in Tyrol in Austria. How of course, Jack managed to escape again one night when <laughs> the floodlights were not working. He made his way through the Alps and into Italy, where he was found and rescued by an American recon unit. Go USA! <laughs> Woo. I love that we have something to do with Mad Jack Churchill. Heck yes. yeah! Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> but this guy, like, you can't keep him down. No, I'm sure can't. He is like, literally, has there been movies made about him? Oh, that's a good, idea. good oh, question. Because if there are, we're watching that. Yes. And if there is, haven't been, why not? Why not? Yeah. I mean, Simon may tell us here in a moment. I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you are, hit that like button. Um, let us know if this is all fresh information to you, too. Mm -hmm. Or if you did know about him, if you've learned something here you hadn't known. I mean, this is insanely cool. Um, when it comes to videos like this, I tend to take a lot more in and focus on what's being said because... Mm -hmm. Um, I do have ADHD, so I like to try to be as much absorbent as I can. Yes. I don't always get everything. Um, I might speak out of turn, say something that, you know, but, um, you know, nothing well, wrong with, with, with having ADHD. Let's take the stigma off that. Just throwing that out there real quick. There's just a lot of information. So there is a lot of information in but these it's, videos. <laughs> it's but so this is cool. pretty amazing. This is insane. And he's right. Like what he said at the beginning, uh -huh. you wouldn't believe it if you wrote it, you know? No. <laughs> I mean... It is stranger than fiction. Sure is. <laughs> uh, it's impressive. So impressive. On the way to Burma. I can pronounce Burma. That's probably wrong, isn't it? <laughs> His time spent as a prisoner did nothing to dull Churchill's appetite for action. The Germans might have surrendered, but the Japanese were still waging war in the mm. Pacific theater. He went off to fight them in Burma, but by the time he had reached India, the Americans had dropped the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and the Japanese forces had capitulated. Half-jokingly, Mad Jack said to one of his friends that if it hadn't been for those damned Yanks, we could have kept the war going for another ten years. The Second World War... <laughs> Why he went the war going on? He wanted to keep fighting. It, it definitely <laughs> seems that way. I, I I just I mean wow. Let's not get into the whole a bomb situation here in the comments, please. But I've heard a lot of the things in my life about that. That's mm -hmm. not something I ever heard. No, I think most people wanted that over. And quit. This guy was hungry, wasn't he? Yes, it was the world he knew for sure. Yeah. He was good at it. He though. was one of those people that's like, you're born into this role. Yeah. You know, it's like. So he was born to be. Yeah. Like, yes. like you being born absolutely beautiful and oh. so compassionate and kind and loving is just like Mad Jack Churchill being born for combat. See what I just did there? 
You sure did. That fits. <laughs> Might have ended, but there were plenty of other conflicts for a man like Jack Churchill. He took advantage of the more relaxed atmosphere to fulfill some of his less important military goals. He took parachuting courses and joined the 5th Parachute did. Battalion, successfully yes. executing his first jump on his 40th birthday. He also entertained his love of everything yeah, Scottish by transferring to the Seaforth Highlanders and becoming a commander of a Scottish regiment. That's awesome. Yeah? Oh, okay. Churchill's last bloody moment in battle occurred in 1948 during the final months of the British Mandate of Palestine. He was deployed as an officer with the Highlands Light Infantry 1st Battalion at a time when conflicts between Jewish and Arab forces were common in the region. On April the 13th, a convoy of medical staff and supplies escorted by members of the Jewish paramilitary organization Haganah was on its way to Hadassah Hospital on Mount Scopus in Jerusalem when it was ambushed by Arab fighters. Churchill and his men were in the area, and although British orders were to stay out of the fight, he tried to evacuate members of the convoy in an APC. Possibly apocryphal, but the story goes that Mad Jack walked alone towards the ambush, smiling and carrying a blackthorn stick. His reasoning was that people are less likely to shoot you if you smile at them. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Highlands Light okay. Infantry provided cover fire, but one of the British soldiers was killed in the shootout. Mm -hmm. Churchill's offer of help was turned down out of belief that Haganah forces will come to the rescue with a better coordinated effort. With one of his soldiers down and his assistants refused, Jack withdrew his men. Haganah forces did not arrive in time, and two mm -hmm. of the convoy trucks caught fire, killing 77 mm -hmm. of the 79 people on board. Oh, Later on, Churchill assisted with the evacuation of Hadassah Hospital, bringing around 500 medical staff and patients to safety. Good for gosh, what a great guy. He said he died in 86, right? Churchill's military career lasted until his retirement in 1959, but wow. the last decade or so was significantly less exciting than the escapades that preceded it. He spent this time mostly as an instructor at various training facilities such as the Army Apprentices School in Chester and the Land Air Warfare School in Queensland, Australia. Okay. Churchill's private life was in stark contrast to his military service as it was quiet and unassuming. In 1941, he married Rosamond Margaret Denny, granddaughter of Sir Archibald Denny, a famed naval architect. Together, they had two sons named Malcolm John Leslie Churchill and Rodney Alastair Gladstone Churchill. During his years down under, Jack became a fan of surfing and continued his hobby when he returned to England. He had Good his final him. brush with fame in 1955 when he became the first person to ride the wave of the River Seven. Afterwards, he kept out of the limelight <laughs> he until did. he died in 1996 okay. in Surrey at the age of 89. Churchill wow, avoided nice. the headlines for the last decades of his life, but he still retrained traces of the rambunctious young man who treated the Second World War as one giant thrilling adventure. He kept busy by refurbishing steamboats, making radio-controlled model ships, and taking part in motorcycle yeah. speed trials. As one when does. he worked in London, Churchill enjoyed we freaking all. out fellow train passengers <laughs> on his commute home by calmly getting up, opening a window, and throwing his briefcase outside. But there was always a method to Jack's Ooh. madness. What the other riders didn't know was that he was actually hurling the briefcase into his own back garden so that he did not have to carry it home from the train station. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us All a thumbs right, up below. Simon, and do that was to... kind of epic, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I don't know, We, I mean, this is the first time we've ever covered any sort of um, outside of American soldier, really. Um, so that was insanely cool. What was your favorite um, part of his life that we, we, mm -hmm. we heard here? Um, mine's, uh, gosh. Mine's all of, I don't know, I, it's all of it. It's really kind of all of it, but I have to say the whole, like, escaping from prisons and stuff and all the different things he did, uh -huh. that's pretty awesome. But the whole, I'm going to call it the Assassin Creed moment, the night, Assassin Creed, Assassin's yeah. Creed night, where he's knocking people out, putting them to sleep, and Sneak out the sneaking night. out. Sneaking out some soldiers and then catch <laughs> 77 more. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Um, this guy, like I said earlier, was born to do this thing. Like, there are just, mm -hmm. I've said this in, in life with you in the past, sweetie. Um, where some people are just born for certain things. You guys, if you've watched our stuff at all, you know we love the military. Yeah. We come from military families. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just not everybody can do everything. You're just made for certain things in life. And that is the epitome of, of someone who is made to fight and just can, I mean, live to be 80, 89, 86, 89, 89. Yeah. Um, my gosh. You know, that's just amazing. Just all the stuff he did in retirement, too. I, mean, I know. Really great. The Good Lord. And stuff. Yeah. And just out surfing. and What a cool dude. He, I think he would have been cool to hang out with. I think I'd be terrified to hang out with the guy. <laughs> I, the think, I think it's absolutely amazing that in a time in the war when everybody's using their guns and their rifles, 
this guy's still using his bow and arrow or longbow is and a sword referred to and sword um i mean that's just kind of genius because you know like i said it, it is silent you don't know the oh, arrows yes yeah. you're absolutely right about that taking you out until you took out yeah that's true and that's so insane a little bit late but i i think everybody over at facebook that recommended this video to us and told us about mad jack churchill um to check him out anyway because mm -hmm. I found that fascinating. Hopefully you did too. Um, again, uh, you know, hit that like button if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing to the channel. Um, let us know in the comments what your thoughts were on this video. Because this was a lot of, it was fun to actually, to learn about this and here's life. And, you know, yeah. maybe some things aren't true and we'll never know. But right. I'm going with some of the, almost all of it is. So I'm sticking with that. Sounds good enough to believe. Yeah. And again, <laughs> thank you for your support over these 100 episodes now. Yes. Um, you know, we never know how long we're going to be here for these things. But uh, hopefully a little while longer and we just appreciate you for sticking around and and watching and just being so kind to us we really do appreciate it um so thanks so much for watching guys we will be back on sunday that's right and we will see you then till next time bye guys bye